Today Christ is born. Today the Savior has appeared. Today the angels sing, the archangels rejoice. Today the righteous rejoice, saying, Glory to God in the highest. Alleluia. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> There are many ways that one tasked with preaching this joyful day, this happy morning, could make meaning of Christmas, this celebration of the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ. I wrote earlier this week in a reflection to the families of this parish that one of the most hopeful meanings of Christmas for me is found as much in the scriptural journey to this day as it is in the day itself. The story is most familiar to us in the Gospel of Luke, where chapter 2 begins with the decree of Caesar's tax and the journey of Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem to the place of Joseph's roots because he was of the house and family of David. The start of the Christmas story is bound up in the journey of finding home, finding and returning to where we belong. We know especially that Mary and Joseph had a hard time finding this same sense of home and belonging. When they arrived in Bethlehem, there was no room for them in the inn. And yet, God made a home for them in the manger, even in the cold, dark night, night which by God's grace has now turned into morning. In English, it may not be obvious to us, but in Latin, I believe the word for home or house peels back a much more layered meaning to this Christmas story that we tell and live out today. The Latin word used in Luke chapter 2 for home or house is domo. The, the root word of this is domus. In its many forms, even translated into English, what I find intriguing about the meaning of domus is that when speaking of a place, there is carried with it a sense of belonging and community. From an architectural sense, a Latin domus or house was often arranged around a courtyard, a space of shared belonging where the community could come together to engage the work and enjoy the company of the household. In a social sense, the word domus also speaks to family, the house of David, to which Mary and Joseph journey in our scripture, is literally both place and people. There is a sense of belonging to a place and to a community, a lineage and a heritage which has been set from ages past. Now, one more point about the Latin to keep us going and to bridge the gap. If you know a bit of Latin, church Latin really, and I'm thinking of you, choir, then you'll be quick to notice the word often used for God as Lord, Dominus, also shares the same root, Domus. To keep this simple, the meaning I find here in our telling again of Christ's birth is that the work of finding home of finding that place where we live and move and have our being, where we have a way of belonging, and the work of finding God are inextricably bound up in one another. The scripture we hear today reminds us that in the birth of Jesus, once more God comes to home amidst the fullness of creation. I believe this to be the paraphrase of the deep beauty and mystery 
of John's prologue, which we read in our gospel lesson today. Plain and simple, this is the promise held from the beginning, spoken by the prophets and brought to us in the Word made flesh, that today God has found a home, and this home is in humanity. God's home is in humanity, in humbleness, in love, in community which lives in peace and sometimes in conflict, in health and also in sickness, in wholeness and also in brokenness, in life and in death, in everything that makes us people made in the image of God, God has found a home. And this home, this place of God's belonging, is not one that is new, but one that was intended from the very beginning. As someone who studied architecture as my undergraduate degree, I think often about the way we make space, the way we choose space or have space chosen for us by others. How do we dwell in this world? To me, the questions of where and how we belong, how we dwell as individuals and as a community are fundamental to how we might see ourselves as part of a larger story. And today, that story is the story of how God came down at Christmas to dwell with his people. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. I think it's worth asking ourselves, what kind of space did God choose? What kind of home did God make for himself in Christ? It wasn't lavish or extravagant, but it was beautiful. It wasn't fortified with stone or iron, but it was strong with faith, though not unbreakable. It wasn't large, but it was immense with grace and with power. And no, I'm not talking about the manger, but the very home of God in human flesh, found in an infant and his mother, who bore light and hope and promise beyond human imagination into this very creation, and yet within what human hearts and bodies are capable of achieving by the grace of God. It has been three years since we have celebrated Christmas tide in person here at St. Luke's, and even still we are joined by others in the Spirit. No matter how we find ourselves, no matter who we are, no matter how we have come to this day, the story of Christmas provides us a welcome and hopeful reminder that whether we find ourselves in need of a place to belong and call home, or we are fortunate enough to be in a place we know and love this holiday season, our true home, that place of light, of love, and of fellowship, is found in the presence of God with us, of God within us, as we remember the birth of Christ who also promised to us that wherever he shall go, we shall also be with him. Christ is our root, our belonging, and our home in this season and in each and every day of our lives. As people of faith and as followers of Jesus, it is our joy and our duty to make a home for him always, whether he comes to us in word and sacrament, in flesh and blood, found in this house or in this house. Christmas is a time to remember how we have been changed by the home God has made within us and to be reassured that if we have shut God out, there is never a time or a place 
where God will not come to be home with us again. It is a time to consider how we might invite others too to share with us in this household of God where we belong, to say, you belong here too. If we receive God today, if we prepare him room, then we will continue in the pro promise of God's love, of God's faithfulness, of life and peace and flourishing. We will dwell in him and he in us. And again, God will do marvelous things. The word is made flesh and dwells among us. So, beloved, let us prepare a room for Christ, our guest. Let us prepare a place in the home of our hearts. Let us the child, cherish the child born for us this Christmas. And let us live out the hope that is given to us always, that in making a home for Christ and all who seek him, in returning, in reopening ourselves, in belonging and in being born again into the eternal home of our God, we might see God's glory in the world and in one another. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Merry Christmas.